U.S. foreign policy. This is what was so great about Fiona Hill's testimony. Yeah. Is that that very moment, and here's a good time to play that clip. The and, and then we'll get back to the to the broader point. Yeah. But Fiona Hill gets up there and she is explaining a moment where she where Sunderland talked about an argument that they had. This is clip number three. <laughs> and um and she is explaining and, and for, for people who are concerned about the ability of a president to do foreign policy as they see fit, um, which I think is a legitimate problem, right? I mean, because we don't Absolutely. want a situation where, um, you know, when uh, President uh, Omar uh, says that we're no longer going to be engaging in imperialism abroad 20 years from now, we don't want people to come back and go like, she's not following U.S. foreign policy. because And we have no doubt, I just want to say to be really clear, we have no doubt that when she is president and we've changed the Constitution and she's there and we've made it happen, that the people inside, and, and this is where I am, you know, a pure lefty, like the intelligence services, the military... They are going to be pushback. They're going to be, yeah. be pushback. Uh, not just pushback. But, They're going to try to destroy her and everything in the right, administration. Of course. Yeah. And, and but there is there. You know what? Uh, what was so great about Fiona Hill's testimony here is that she, as a national security and um, uh, diplomatic professional, makes a very clear delineation between um, what, what constitutes foreign policy and what does not. And one of the things that I was really impressed about this was that you see how foreign policy is um, is made and you see or at least executed and you see how much rigor there is to maintaining professionalism. Um, and uh, here is Fiona Hill. She was the um, the National Security Council's uh, Russian expert who also dealt with Ukraine policy because, of course, the, the relationship between Russia and Ukraine. Um, and she is being questioned by the Republican House uh, counsel, uh, Caster. Is he bad or does he just have not much to work with? He does not have much yeah. to work with. No. Well, I think you might recall in my deposition on October 14th that I said that very unfortunately I had a bit of a blow up uh, with Ambassador Sundland and I had a couple of testy encounters with him. One of those was in June 18, um, when I actually said to him, who put you in charge of Ukraine? And you know, I'll admit I was a bit rude. And that's when he told me the president, which shut me up. And this um, other meeting, um, it was about 15, 20 minutes, exactly as he depicted it was. I was actually, to be honest, angry with him. And, um, um, you know, um, I hate to say it, but often when women show anger, it's not fully appreciated. It's often, you know, pushed onto emotional issues uh, perhaps or deflected um, onto um, other people and what I was angry about was that he wasn't coordinating with us. Now I actually realised having listened to his deposition that he was absolutely right that he wasn't coordinating with us because we weren't doing the same thing that he was doing. So I was upset with him that he wasn't fully telling us about all of the meetings that he was having and he said to me but I'm briefing the president, I'm briefing Chief of Staff Mulvaney I'm briefing Secretary Pompeo and I've talked to Ambassador Bolton. Who else do I have to deal with? And the point is we have a robust interagency process uh, that deals with Ukraine. It includes Mr. Holmes. It includes Ambassador Taylor as the charge in Ukraine. It includes a whole load of other people. But it struck me when yesterday when you put up on the screen Ambassador Sondland's emails and who was on these emails and he said these are the people who need to know that he was absolutely right because he was being involved in a domestic political errand. And we were being involved in national security foreign policy, and those two things had just diverged. So he was correct, and I had not put my finger on the, at that at the moment, but I was irritated with him and angry with him that he wasn't fully coordinating. And I did say to him, Ambassador Sondland, Gordon, I think this is all going to blow up, and here we are. And and so it's fascinating because she's like describing she, she is describing a you know the way that foreign policy is um, is both developed based upon the wishes of the president, 
which is has its own checks and balances uh, built into it, where you mm. hear from people from State Department, people from uh, presumably from uh, intelligence agencies, from the National Security Council, et cetera, et cetera. She was mad at Sunlin because he wasn't keeping everybody in the loop. He wasn't mm. being a team player. And then she realized like, oh, I sh- it was wrong for me to get mad at him about not being a team player because I didn't realize he's on a separate team. <laughs> he's he's part of what you know uh, 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 Taylor called the irregulars, mm. which Sunland said there was no irregulars because from from Sunland's perspective, like I'm dealing with all the top people in the government. <laughs> so, and, and and what it turns out is, in some ways, that the people who are actually doing the business of the stated foreign policy of the United States. Well, you could agree with it or disagree with it. And I think, you know, there's certainly some room for, for that. But Congress had appropriated money. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there was there is a transparent process to what Ukraine po- foreign policy towards Ukraine is. Yeah. And how it's executed is a function of all these people coming together. And she very brilliantly basically says, it was my mistake I was rude. I didn't realize that they had this other secret agenda <laughs> that Mulvaney, Pompeo, and Bolton were all involved in. So was the president. And they were doing their own thing that was illicit. We were doing the illicit thing. Yeah. And I was angry at him because I thought he wasn't doing the illicit thing properly. But in fact, it turns he out was, he was just doing a different, yeah. He was just doing a different <laughs> illicit thing. I mean, I. I was going to say, forgive me for, I didn't know you were doing crimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, if I had known it was crimes, was I had, I, the, I think it is important too, because if the, if the fear, the very real fear is that the blob will push back against a president trying to enact his agenda. Um, like, you know, that's easy to imagine, but like what we're talking about here is like Congress, like this is a, a something Congress passed and that the administration was that's supposed a to implement. Crucial distinction. This was the, in, the administration was just supposed to implement this thing Congress passed. And honestly, you know, like another thing I was struck by when I was re- doing research for my piece was like, oh, there should have been impeachment hearings over Iran Contra. It was Absolutely. like the same same damn thing. Absolutely, exact same damn thing. Yep. And it was like, oh, Congress passed this thing, but we have our own. We're going to do our own little crimes over here. What I don't understand. <laughs> about, yeah, I mean, this is this is <laughs> just hurt. really quick question though. What I truly don't understand about Iran Contra, and maybe, and again, I was you know not following it at the time, so maybe this re- just reflects my own reading habits. But why is it that first of all, it's crazy that nobody was impeached over that one, but it also seems like. Those committees and John Kerry actually did a way better job of exposing that story oh, yeah. to the yeah. public. They made a mistake, I think, in giving. Democ- they got hung up in, in giving uh, North uh, immunity, in, and they sequenced it wrong. I think. But was a I'm big just part saying, what's odd is that there are a lot of people I think watching these hearings that are not. I mean, maybe her testimony will help, but they are. This is not coming through to people, and Iran Contra, I think, well, did go uh, through. To I a will lot tell of you, that there's two things. Yeah, one is. You have Nancy Pelosi who's put the brakes on this process right. mm-hmm. throughout. And right. two is, frankly, John Kerry was in the Senate. Mm-hmm. And in fact, the hearings for Watergate started in the Senate, mm-hmm. not in the House, and then went back to the House. And that's when, and when the House started to vote it on impeachment proceedings, that's when he resigned. So the, the sequencing was different. And having hearings in the Senate, this is the difference between having Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer as 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 Senate majority leaders because yeah. if, if these because what you're going to see when Lindsey Graham calls these hearings on Hunter Biden the gravity of it is going to be greater right. because the senators you know are not uh, you know are not these podunk you know uh, and I think frankly the the people on the the intelligence committee are probably the best of the best at this stuff yeah and uh, you know some of the Democrats on there are quite good. Uh, uh, but, and, and frankly, you know, so are the Republicans at what they're doing, but in the Senate, they're all just a little bit sharper, I think. And, um, so just and, prestige and, and prestige, and they, have, they have more staff and they have, yeah. uh, right. you know, uh, more That's resources. But I mean, again, just not to put it too fine a point on it. Fiona Hill is saying it's as if she works at a bank and everybody has a job to do in terms of getting the, the money into the safe. <laughs> and, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, the manager has to come over and sign the little docket. Yeah. And then uh, Billy has to come over with the bag Billy. and take the, you know, and, and, you know, uh, two uh, tellers have to walk with uh, Billy so that yeah. they all, and they all check each other off. And there's one guy, you know, Kevin, who is the <laughs> assistant manager, who's like not doing his job and she's yelling at him. And then she finds out like, oh, I'm sorry. 
Kevin was taking the bag and walking out into the manager's office because they're stealing all the money. <laughs> and I was mad at him because he wasn't being a team player. I didn't realize yeah. that he had a slightly different agenda. Right. No, yeah. He wasn't following the normal protocol, which I realize now why that was. I was exactly. talking yeah, very good reason. about laundering money from the Sinaloa cartel. What's your problem? <laughs>